Hello people, today we are going to learn about accrual and deferrals in financial accounting. So let's get started. Adjusting entries. Adjusting entries are needed whenever revenue or expenses affect more than one accounting period. Every adjusting entry involves change in either revenue or expense and an asset or liability. Types of adjusting entries are number one is converting asset to expenses, converting liabilities to revenue, accruing unpaid expenses, accruing uncollected revenues. So let's see how we can understand all these. Converting asset to expenses. This is the prior period, this is the current period timeline and this is the future period timeline. In the prior period transaction happens and then we do adju uh, adjusting entries. So in case of uh, transaction what happens is paid future expenses in advance and creates an asset. So just if you pay, uh, if you buy a life insurance or uh, some kind of insurance, so you have paid the expenses in advance. So for until and until uh, unless that the period passes, it is an asset for you, which is which you can use it for future benefits. In the adjusting entry, what happens is you after the period has ended, when your ex uh, life insurance or some insurance expire, rental insurance expires, then what happens is uh, you it turns into an expense. Recognize portion of asset consumed as expense and re reduce balance of asset account. So once the asset become when the period passes, then the asset becomes an expense. So what you do is reduce the asset amount and turn it into an expense. Converting asset to expenses examples are depreciation. If you buy some furniture, uh, when you buy a furniture, uh, so every day the value of furniture uh, decreases. That is called de depreciation. In case of supplies, also, it at some point when you use that supply, use the paper or pencil, so. It uh, when you used it, it, uh, it it is no longer an asset. It becomes expenses. Expiring insurance policies also, uh, when the period passes, uh, the insurance policy be from becomes from asset. It becomes an expense. Converting asset to expenses. So let's see an example. Two thousand four hundred insurance policy coverage for twelve months. So assuming this company has a policy of 2400 and if you divide the 2400 equally among 12 months it will be 200 monthly um, ex insurance expense. So how we can write in the journal for this particular thing. So when you buy this 2400 uh, insurance policy in advance it becomes an asset which uh, which is not expired it is like future uh, this is for future benefit so as soon as you buy you debit um, uh, insurance exp uh, unexpired insurance as an asset and you credit the cash because you paid cash uh, to buy this insurance so this is a uh, journal entry looks like this is how a journal entry looks like when you purchase one year insurance policy Converting asset to expense. The costs are expensed as they are used to generate revenue. So journal entry will look like this. Monthly adjusting entry for insurance. First month insurance you have used. So per month as we calculated before was 200. So since we have used the first month of insurance policy, then it has it is no longer an asset. So first month um, value becomes an expense and we just make a journal entry that insurance expense is 200 debit of 200 and unexpired insurance of 200 as a credit so it this unexpired insurance was an asset but out of that 200 has expired so we credit it with 200 converting asset to expenses balance sheet looks like this cost of asset that benefit future period. 
unexpired insurance was 2400 now the first month has gone so we credit 200 now the balance of our asset for this insurance policy is 2200 and insurance expense in the income statement looks like this credit uh, debit of 200 expense of 200 The concept of depreciation. Depreciable assets are physical objects that retain their size and shape but lose their economic usefulness over time. Depreciation is the systematic allocation of the cost of a depreciable asset to the expense. The concept of depreciation. The portion of asset utility that is used up must be expensed in the period used. On the date when initial payment is made, you do cash credit, and which whatever asset you get as a is a becomes a deb, uh, debit side entry for an asset. Like if you buy a truck, um, the truck becomes your asset, but you have to pay the cash to get that truck. So you credit cash on the asset side and debit to the truck as an asset side. Both have the equal value. These assets usefulness is partially consumed during the period. When, whenever you buy an asset like uh, furniture or vehicle or building, it has a, it accumulates some kind of depression over the period of time. So accumulated depreciation uh, becomes credit. And at the end of the period, depreciation expense becomes debt. Depreciation is only an estimate. On May 2nd, uh, 2003, XYZ purchased a lawn mover with a useful life of 50 months for 2500 cash. Using straight line depreciation, uh, depreciation method, calculate the monthly depreciation expense. So in case of straight line, we just divide the cost of asset divided by estimated useful life. So the cost of asset is 2500 and estimated useful life is 50 months. So 2500 divided by 50 gives you 50. So this is the depreciation expense per period. So as the period passes, every month you can just do the entry for depreciation expense uh, which is $50 per month. Uh, XYZ would make the following adjustment, adjusting entry. So this on May 31st depreciation expense was $50 as calculated before and uh, this is the accumulated depreciation tools and equipment credit side of $50. This is a contra asset account. Do you remember this? This is not an asset account but a contra asset account. Uh, XYZ is a 15,000 truck is depreciated over 60 months as follows. So May 31st Depreciation expense is $250, which is 15,000 divided by 60 months is 250 per month. So after the month ends, the ex uh, depreciation expense becomes 250, which is on the debit side, and accumulated depreciation of the drug becomes 250 on the credit side. Accumulated depreciation would appear on the balance sheet as follows: tools and equipment 2650 uh, minus the accumulated depreciation of $50. Uh, which is which becomes two six zero zero, and for the truck, fifteen thousand dollar was original uh, value. Then accumulated depreciation uh, we uh, minus it, and it becomes fourteen thousand seven hundred fifty. So I hope you understood what's uh, uh, depreciation. How we do entries for accumulated depreciation. Converting liabilities to revenue and uh, this is again a timeline prior period current period and future period This is a transaction collected from customer in advance which creates a liability and this is recognized uh, adjusting entry at the end of current period uh, the portion of the uh, on revenue is recognized and the liability uh, Account is reduced. So let's see an example how it works Example will include airline ticket. You buy whenever you fly somewhere, you buy a ticket in advance. Uh, so um, you have not. So when you buy a ticket in advance, it becomes a uh, liability for the uh, airline customer. And although they have got the money, 
but uh, they cannot recognize uh, that as an a revenue earned revenue unless and until you fly it you use that ticket because you might cancel or whatever it is unless and until the event has happened it does not become a revenue same thing is sports team sales season tickets so unless and until the event has happened it is not recognized and revenue it is still a liability liability to revenue 6000 rental contract convert coverage for 12 months so uh, if you divide if you are paid an advance of $6000 for 12 months um, this becomes uh, the uh, liability for the owner uh, for one year unless and until you stay for the 12 months this is not a revenue for it when when revenue will be uh, uh, recognized it will be recognized as the months passed by so for 6000 divided by 12 makes 500 monthly rental revenue so what happens is when you get give six thousand cash, uh, the asset is increased by uh, six thousand, which become but uh, there is another account which is called unearned rental revenue, which is six thousand, which is not an actual revenue, but it is unearned revenue. So on credit side of unearned rental revenue, right, you write six thousand, which is unearned revenue is a liability because you have not earned it. You have to perform that service to earn it. Over the time, the revenue recognized as it is earned. Like at the end of the first month, the the rental uh, the landlord has uh, earned five hundred dollars, which is the monthly rental income. So from unearned rental revenue, which is a liability account, the, uh, he will uh, debit five hundred dollars, and because th this money th he has earned, so it will become a revenue, and he will put credit uh, it. So rental revenue will become 500 at the end of first month. Converting liabilities to the revenue. Balance sheet liability for future period. Balance income statement revenue earned this period. So for unearned rental revenue which is a liability account this is the general entry. Unearned revenue is 500 uh, on the debit side when you have earned it then uh, it goes to rental revenue on the credit side. So the balance of the liability account is now 5500 at the end of first month. Accruing unpaid expenses. So what happens is uh, recognize expense incurred and record liability for future pay payment at the end of current period. And then transaction will be liability will be paid in future. Examples is um, interest, veg, uh, wages and salary and property and taxes. So these are expense but we only recognize it at the end of the period, not uh, in advance. So whenever you have worked for the entire month or entire week, you get a pay at the end of the week. So although the this has uh, at the start of month, these are all accruing unpaid expenses. But it always happens in the start of the next pay period. In case of property tax, all these things are unpaid expenses, which will be recognized once it is paid. So three thousand for for the month Monday, May twenty nine to Wednesday thirty first, the three thousand is the wage, wage expense, which they owe, and the pay period is second uh, June. So what will happen in the journal entry? On May 31st, they will write wage expense of $3,000 and the liability of $3,000 on the credit side. This has become expense and pay, wages payable, which is a still a liability because no, it is not actually paid. So it is still uh, on the deb credit side on the liability, which is wages payable. On the balance sheet, we will write as wage payable, which is a liability account, which should be paid in the future, of $3,000 on the credit side and expense on the debit side, cost incurred this period to generate revenue. So, wage expense will be written on the debit side. Accruing unpaid expenses. So, 3000 uh, on on June 2nd, which is a pay period, this is the to extract wedge expense and this was the accrued wedge expense. 